says, Dear Leah, is it possible that coming down hard on my husband can help when he's apathetic about a certain issue and communicating nicely has not helped? I found that when I yelled about him fixing the broken door latch, he finally fixed it. <laughs> right? <coughs> so that's the question. Do people have thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with her. It works <laughs> wonders. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. You know what? It works wonders. It's the same as, uh, sadly, but it's the same as our kids. Like, you'll ask something, ask something, and they're not listening, and you try all these techniques, and then you raise your voice, or you get that look, and everyone's like, <laughs> like, whoa, boom, whoa. boom, 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 yeah, and soldiers, yeah. and they're doing it. So yeah, your husband yeah. also, I think, when, you know, he's, when you raise your voice, and whatever, so. Anybody else has some thoughts on that? Do we yell, or do we... Zip our lip. Yell. No. Yell. <laughs> well, that's your show of hands. Okay. Yeah. Yell. We use the ventriloquist. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the ventriloquist. We tell him how we know he's going to change that light bulb or whatever it was. That's great, I know actually. you're going to do it, and I know I'm not going to have to ask you three times or more. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> terrific. Uh, actually, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I just had a ventriloquist. Okay, it's gone in one head. I was going to share a story today. I can't remember it. Anyway, okay. So here's the issue that we need to think about in this. There is no Masora, there's no tradition for yelling. <laughs> doesn't say, oh, this will get you what you need. This will get you where you want to go. There's, we, that, there's no source for this. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You kind of figured, right? So there's no source for yelling. So, in fact, there's many sources against yelling. Why is this? Because when you yell, it for sure, most 99% of the time, yelling produces short-term results. Usually they jump up. But it also produces long-term resentments. Mm -hmm. So just as any one of us would want to Bashat Tova, by the way. So very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Hashem should bench it. Should go well and healthy and well. We yeah. have a pregnant lady yes, in the house. Yes, that's so. In the house. Who's, very who's, good. who's on the, the last leg yeah. of her, <laughs> of her <laughs> journey. <laughs> and she's here today. here today. So we have a labor today at the ladies' talk show. You can yell. Yes. Yeah. 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 You get that light bulb changed. So whatever it is. She's you like, want. I, mean, I, get, I yes. can't yell. What does that mean? I can't yell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can yeah. you can yell. Okay, you can yell. whatever. You can yell. You can yell. <laughs> None of us can yell. Very you, nice. can yell. you can yell. Okay, so that's very sweet. <laughs> so um, the, the issue is it produces, it's great to see you. <laughs> it's gr it produces short term gains and long term resentments and it is a disaster and here's one of the main reasons if you're looking for a reason what's in it for me Leah why, okay so I'm going to be a good person I'm not going to be a good person here's why to be a good person on this because if you yell guess what's going to happen you're going to get yelled at 99% chance likelihood you will get yelled at and it's a very unpleasant way to go through life okay so here's here's a quick fix Emojis. Oh, yeah. Emojis. Oh, yeah. Like, Please change Steve. the light bulb yeah. and send a thousand emojis. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. 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 Emojis. Right. So. Which, one, which ones are you sending? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. So here, so what's the solution then? What's the solution? You have asked ten times. You've asked, come on, guys, let's go. Let, you know, come on. The door latch is broken. Please fix the door latch. We need the door latch. We need a new door latch. Right. Fine. You've done this again and nothing's happened. So now you're tempted, would you, and you run out of the room or something, okay? What is the solution to getting the door latch done? So think about something you, your husband's bugging you about. Those curtains are falling apart, or I don't know, the, you're, you're, you know, weren't you going to tell your boss, ask your boss to have the summer off or something like that, or have a week off in the summer? Have you asked him yet? Have you asked him yet? Why didn't you ask your boss for the week off? You know, whatever, and he escalates. So we know how awful it feels to be yelled at. So what is the solution? There is a conversation that can be had with your husband. All of us know this. We've been married for a while. There is a conversation that you can have that will produce the results of getting the door latched done. Now, 
A, you may not have good commu uh, communication skills. B, you may do it with so much emotion and so much anger that it's not going to be su successful. C, you could ask him in a way at, a, at the wrong time. So there's a lot of errors you can make in communicating this, but we could all probably agree if we gave it enough thought and enough planning and enough care and enough you know, pl um, uh, forethought, there is a conversation that would work. Most likely, okay? There's no, no guarantees in life. But for instance, if you were to say, you know, I've asked you 20 times to fix the door latch, not going to work. If you, say, if you were to say, you know, I, I, the reason I, I get it's a really annoying thing because fixing the door latch, you have to first figure out what's wrong and why it's not latching. So I get that. But it's not, this isn't a concern that I have about the door latch because I want it to look pretty. This is a concern I have because with it not working, I'm really afraid one of the kids is going to shut it at night or something like that. And we're going to be sleeping and some, God forbid, someone can get in the house without it fixing. So it's a security thing. I don't want to put added pressure and added annoyance on you. What, what should we do? Do you want me to call a handyman? Do you want me to get all, you know, to look at it and order a new, uh, every part you could possibly use so you have it on hand so when you finally do sit down and do it, it'll be everything there. What can I do, sweetie pie? I really, I just, I can't live with this anymore. Would you just let me call a handyman? Just let me, you know, if it's something he can't, let's say he can't do a handyman. It has to be something he's doing that you've been nagging about. If you think long and hard enough, if you're the kind of person who gets very nervous in these things and who lets your emotions get away from you and you know if you start this conversation, you're going to yell, write him a letter or write him an email or a text or, you know, or plan out. He says this, she says this, he says this, oh, she, me, yeah. me. I say this, he says this, you know, what if it goes this way? What if he says that? This is something you can plan. You can figure it out and have a much higher success rate. So I get it, yelling is effective, but always remember, any time a yell comes out of your mouth, guaranteed it's gonna backfire somewhere, you may not see it immediately, somewhere, sometime, it's gonna backfire, both in this world and for certainly in the next world. Okay, very good. The other thing about the uh, yelling that I wanted to say to this very nice lady who wrote this very heartfelt letter is that there's a um, there's a whole thing we give lots of examples in here but there's a whole thing of trial and error that is so forgotten in our society it's kind of like we want an instant answer this works that doesn't work oh this cleaner that's going to clean everything you know this spritz 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 whatever it is we're looking for cheap closure like something that works that's not how relationships are, as you can tell. Relationships are trial and error. You know your husband a whole lot better than I know him. You've been, you know, trying this and that and the other thing. Sometimes we keep trying the same thing and trying the same thing, and we just mad at him because he's not shifting. Maybe we need to try our, a different way. Like instead of saying, you know, nagging for the 11th time, would you please fix the door, the door latch? Maybe if we uh, were to... Um, What's some crazy idea? Uh, you know, <laughs> make a post-it note, yeah. or get get a whole pad of post-it notes and put "Please fix latch" and put one on his car and one on his rearview mirror and one on his the fridge and one he opens the butter and whatever. <laughs> okay, he'd be maybe that's like yelling. I don't know, but I'm just saying there's stuff we can do going outside the box. It's trial and error, and the anyone who if you don't put in this effort, if you don't put the trial and error, and you're just mad at your husband. It's kind of like you should be mad at yourself for not being able to get him to do the door latch prop because you've been asking him wrong, you've been nagging. Let, raise your hand if you love to be told what to do. <laughs> okay? Like in school, you, you, you know, if you tell a kid what to do, he'll, he'll do the opposite. In fact, we know this is reverse psychology. Tell something to, someone to do something. Tell them to do the opposite of what you want them to do, and you've got a better chance of getting it done. So here, you're asking your husband again and again, and you're nagging him, and you're telling him, and whatever. That's not, that's what the issue is. So it's up to us and our creativity to be able to get, to accomplish those things. And again, red flag, if you're yelling, you know, this, oops, this is the wrong tactic. I, he might do it right now, but there will be payback. Okay, very good. Next question. Any questions over here on Facebook or We're on? Good. We're, thing? Right We're good. We're good. Okay, fine. Let's go to the next one. 
Uh, Dear Leia, I don't know how to stop reacting angrily to my husband's actions, like he'll walk right over the mail without picking it up. I don't know. I've never heard of that. Okay. Every kid comes through the door, you know, and it's still on the floor at the end of the night. Okay. Unless mommy comes and gets it. Does anyone else have this? Uh, it's not me. I've heard of other people yeah. have this problem. Okay. Okay. So he'll walk o- r- right over the mail without picking it up or he'll leave crumbs all over the table expecting me to clean it up. Okay. So I snap at him and then I get mad at myself for losing it. I just can't control my anger. No, any thoughts? Mm. She's snapping at him because he's, he's doing these things that bug her, and she's, he's snapping at the moment. Maybe he, she should read the letter from the lady right before her. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very hard. Very hard. So how do you control your anger? Okay, so here, I actually did write this lady back, and I'm going to read my response to her because it's a... Um, I, worded it succinctly, and then if I say it over now, I'm probably going to mess it up. Okay, so I emailed her, rather than saying, uh, rather than saying, like she's saying to her, I just can't control my anger. It's very disempowering, right? I just can't control my anger. How much, how, how much strength does that give her to move forward with excitement and whatever? She feels like a loser, and she feels like she herself, she's disappointed in herself. Her family's disappointed. She's, her husband's disappointed. Her children probably disappointed. So she's disappointed in herself because she said the following words, I just can't control my anger. So rather than that, how about rewording it like this? This is the ventriloquist. This was the thing I was thinking of. Okay. For a long time, I've had an issue controlling my tongue when I get angry but I'm much more aware of it now than I ever have been before. And rather than blaming the other person for my tongue like I used to, like, ah, he deserved it, or, uh, you know, whatever, rather than doing that, now I'm realizing it's really within my own power to control it. See how that immediately empowers her? Now it's not over there. It's not the way I am. This is within her power to control it. So that is, so this is the person still talking to herself, ventriloquisting to herself. This is a huge accomplishment. But also, now that I'm more aware of it, of how I snap when I'm angry, I see it more often because I, a light bulb went on and I see how often I snap. Rather than making myself feel badly for that because I'm seeing it more often, the trick is to see it at see, the fact that you're seeing it deserves a pat on the back because you're seeing it. That's half the battle, more than half the battle. But I am determined to use every time, so this is her talking to herself, I'm determined to use every time I notice it to strengthen myself on how amazing I am for owning up to it without blaming others. I'm going to pat myself on the back every time I notice that I'm starting to snap and react, try to react with 1% better at the time. So you're there and you, typically you'd say, why did you do that? Okay, so now you notice it. Now you feel horrible about yourself. So you're about to say, why did, ugh, whatever. That's like huge. You know, you're stopping yourself midstream. Now, obviously, it'd be better, the highest level would be to not say it at all. But to notice and to try is huge. And don't get down on your, listen to me, ladies, do not get down on yourself for trying. If you try, we have a Masura, we have many, many sources that say, if you try something so huge as this, God himself will come along and help you. So you're about to yell, and just never mind. And then somebody walks in, oh, here, I've got some pralines and cream ice cream. I thought you guys would all love it. Here, I brought five gallons, each a gallon for each of you, or whatever it is, okay? Something gorgeous will come in your life that God himself sent there. Maybe ice cream. I don't know if you like pralines and cream. I'm not even positive what that is. But I just, I, I know that I have a friend who's crazy about pralines and cream, ice cream. But I'm just saying, Whatever it is, you can, this is guaranteed. This is not like, oh, what an airy-fairy spiritual idea. This is a guarantee. Th- we have many sources for this. This is God's word that we will be blessed if we go for shalom, if we go for peace. So this is no joke. So this, the re- why am I telling you in such detail? Because when you're about to pounce, 
if you knew there was so much in it for you, before it's just like, ugh, I'm just, I'm just an angry person, and, that's, and they did something that's annoying, and they never listened to me, and blah, 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 you're really not growing. You're really not getting what you want out of life, which is closeness to other people, among other things. If you stop yourself and you think about it and use introspection and stop yourself and understand how much is in it for you, it's a thousand times easier to stop yourself. You know, yeah, we fall into habits and maybe some of us have this for longer than others, okay? So I get it, but this is the, this is the path. So basically you're saying, you're going to, she is saying, instead of saying I'm an angry person, now she's saying, you know, I, I got this. I'm, I'm now I'm noticing more yikes, but that's at least a level. That's a madrega. That's a place I'm getting to. Yay, yay me, okay? But also at the same time, you want to have a understanding of that that's part of the growth process is noticing it more. And most importantly, and here's where this is like the next level, a little bit hard, is to apologize immediately, as soon as you possibly can. Because the time between when you've committed an angry bout or a, a, um, a spat or yelled or blurted out, from that moment until you say that apology, which hopefully we're all mature enough and growing enough that we eventually get there, okay, especially if it's all our fault. It might be their fault too, but whatever. If it's even 0.01% our fault, an apology is warranted and it feels so good and it brings a lot of closeness in the marriage and in all of your relationships. But the issue is, from the moment you do the thing until you apologize, you spend the entire time rationalizing why you did it and why they're bad and what they did last week and what they did last year and five years ago and they've never this and they've always been that way and they blah, 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 and you get yourself into such a tizzy that apologizing becomes a thousand times harder. So the lesson for this lady, thank you very much for writing in, the lesson is to um, notice more and more when you have an angry bout when you sp when you out, and then work on that, realizing that fallbacks and that you're working on you're a work in progress as all of us are, and then apologize as quickly as you can. Anyone want to add anything to that? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, no, I, I think the the hardest thing is especially with a husband is that you sort of and I find that a lot with me. Well, is where there a dog out there? Is there a dog out there? Is everything okay? Yeah, wolf, wolf. <laughs> um, is okay. that um, is that I, I find it even for myself is that I know how you always say like that you should if you're feeling cranky or you're feeling bothered or whatever just say it or if there's something that's being done that you don't like just say oh you know do you mind so many times I find that in my mind what's going running through my head is you should just know this already oh you he know? Should know yeah it. meaning the mail on the floor Come, like, on. come on, the crumbs on the table, are you three, like, it's, it's things that it's like, in your head, you're going, is he, it's, how, how retarded could you be not to see that you just made crumbs, and now wipe it off, and, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's so, it's hard to, it's hard to excuse it, it's why it becomes so hard to, and then you become snappy, and, you know, like me and my bike. I told you today, this morning, the exact same thing. I went on my bike to do my workout, and he starts talking to me, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I'm just literally keep going on. I'm, ah, you know, doing my thing, and I'm not even. I'm like maybe nodding like this. And afterwards, I get off, and he goes, "Are you okay? Is everything all right? You seem like a little, you know, maybe." It's, and I'm like, mm, 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 "No, mm, 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 mm. yeah, good." And I literally ran out quickly, ran, and like disappeared into the bathroom. <laughs> For no joke, like 40 minutes. And when I just... came out, he's like, whoa, where'd you go? You like disappeared. And I'm thinking it was either me staying in the room and wringing your neck or running to the bathroom. So I chose the bathroom. Wow. Because it's like, how many times do I tell you that when I'm on the bike and I can't breathe and I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want you to have conversations with me. Do you want to Hang it on the bike. You know what? I think my face is a do not disturb sign. Or wear a okay? t-shirt. Yes. Says, do not my disturb. face. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. She's like, like, I just want to get past the workout. And I'm like, do you not see this? That does not look like your wife anymore. It looks like a scary monster. Stay away. No. So, yeah. so, so that's why I think it's Can like I ask you a question? What, 
communication have you I, had? I did. I've said it. I said like, oh my gosh, you know, when I'm on the bike, it's I can't breathe, and I, I told it to my kids. I, I make such a big deal out of it. I he's it's like ADHD. He doesn't, you know. I don't even think he realizes I'm on the bike. I don't know. <laughs> Comes so, in, he starts talking. I don't, I, I don't know. And I, I don't. I know it's me. What's the big deal for me to just say, honey, on the bike? <gasps> Or can, you, can you say I something can't. like, can I meet you at lunch? Yeah, no, no, I want, I want uh, when to I, when, I, I, when I can concentrate on what you're saying? Yeah. I no? Know. I need my 40 minutes of me time. This yeah. is my me time. Yeah. They, yeah, know, they know what that means. Like that. What'd you no, say? No. Men insulted because you say, this is my me time. No, yeah. no, men understand yeah. that you need me time. It's like, I'm just trying to talk to you. Like, why are you so? No, no, he had such light like conversations. He, I don't think he, you know what the truth is? I, I, I did, after I got, today I did have a, like an epiphany. I'm getting him spinning shoes and I'm putting him on the bike. I really am. I'm putting him on the bike. I'm going to have so, him go so on the bike and he's, he's going to do a little bit of spinning and I'm going to go come and talk to him and see how well he does. No, I really, I think he he's needs... He's going to be talking to you because he's going to be like, la, 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 No, la, no, 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 he's not going to be talking. He's not going to be able to breathe and he's going to be like, <gasps> And I think he's going to realize it. I, I, otherwise, I don't know. I'm, I literally tell him, and he just does not. It's the same as her with the mail. I'm sure she said it to him a hundred times, please don't step over the mail. Uh, it, it, it sounds like it's not something right, that, right, it right. sounds it's like he does it every time single problem. time. So, right. Isn't it easier to pick up the mail yourself? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's such a silly thing. Yeah. <laughs> to keep getting upset about it. Like, well, crumbs. crumbs. Crumbs that every no, time. It's irritating to leave But it's it, so all just... these little things. Right. It's always the little things like your husband is, how do they, we're so much more attuned to what their things are. If he's on the phone, if he's typing, or he's doing, we, we're attuned to what it is. No, yeah, yeah and they're not. So then you could have some things that like, yeah, you'll do it. Like they'll just, you'll, Zip your lip and you'll do it. Like one of these can be one. The, right. Like the crumbs can be one of those it's things. Worth it. Right. Right. It's worth it. Right. Right. It's like it's an I feel like we had these things that they were always doing, and like you said, if they don't, right. you know, they if you talk to them and they can't, can't yeah. like figure out how to, you know, right. You got to pick your balance. Then you, just, you have to like, pick. You'll just What's, wipe the crumbs up. You're not gonna say it's for Michelle and bias and pick up the crumbs. Whatever it is, those little things that annoy you, direct to Hashem. This is for Michelle and bias. That's what we learned. That's it. For the kids, it's different because you want to train them. But it's hard when you're trying to train the kids and the husband does. Do it like nice. that's what's so, hard. This, you want your kids. I get it, but this this there's something about this spinning them, him coming up and talking to you that I feel like that there's a there's got to be something that can be done. I mean, even like you have a do not you know you say you know a, you get a piece of an index card, a b big one. No, it is. No, oh, you tape it to the bike. No, that says. I love you dearly. You're the most important thing in my entire planet but Earth. Stay away from me now. <laughs> but it, don't it, go near me. Please, I need 40 don't minutes. Don't get between me and my bike. What, what'd you say? Don't get between don't me and my bike. No, but, but, you know, I love you dear. You know, huge, whatever, piece yeah. of paper that you yeah. tape to the bike that says, I love you dearly. You mean the world to me. If you need me, I will absolutely stop cycling, spinning, whatever. No, 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 I won't. Oh, he ah! I'm like, what? I no. don't care if there's a fire. He's if doing you, it all on his own. Really I'm finishing and then I'm getting off. Yeah. Yeah. It's me transition time, okay? Five more minutes yeah. before bedtime. You probably need to give a verbal transition statement. I am so looking forward to going on my bike. I'm going to go on my bike. Please, I need my call. time and in advance. Exactly. So you're giving an advanced transition. Right. Maybe like I'm about I'm to really, on my bike. Yeah, I, if you need anything, yeah. let me know now because I really once might be I'm able on, to talk to you once I'm on my bike. Gorgeous! Um, Is that gorgeous? Like that. I'm going to try that. That's gorgeous. I'm going to try that. They should say, do you need anything? Because in the next 20 minutes, we're not going to be available. So... That's beautiful. Uh, my husband okay. said it to me when he's been on the bike. I've tried to go into the room and talk to him. Does, I'll talk to you in 40 minutes or whatever it is. Right. And you know, yet, yet she is able to say to you, I, I don't even want to get involved. I'll speak to you in 40 <laughs> minutes. She can't even talk. It's so, like, and I get annoyed. You know, it's like, it's, and, so, and it's that annoyance of, why don't you know this already? Yeah, you know, I know, you're married to me 22 so years. So can I ask That's you a question? Why, does, why did God give you a husband that c couldn't keep it in straight in his head? Right, I know. No, why? Cause, why? Cause I have to work on it, That's obviously. That's how men are made. And <laughs> everyone's nodding. Uh, <laughs> That's how men are made. But also, what, why would God, you're looking at it as if it's your husband who is doing that to you. 
okay? And your husband does have culpability for his actions. I'm not saying that, okay? But I am saying that for whatever reason, God has put this in your life. There's nothing that happens in your life that isn't rubber stamped by God says, oh, this is what she needs to grow in what way? So why would God do that? Maybe it makes you more patient. Maybe it makes you yeah, have to learn this gorgeous communication technique, which is preemptively tell him you're about to go on the bike or put a big, huge poster or whatever. Again, this is the trial and error team, okay? You try this, try that until it works. There's no reason for you to continue to be have that anger and, and, and annoyance at your husband when there is actually something you can do about it. Now, is there something he can do about it? Like, remember? Hello? Yes. Okay, get it. I get it. But that you have no power over that. Ladies, you realize we have no power over this? You recognize that we can do as much as we some jump and song and dance and whatever we do, we have no control over what they do or of what anybody else does. We only have control over me. And these tactics and trying different methods and whatever, is that stupid? Is that annoying? He should know. Okay, I hear that. He should know. Okay, fine. Where, where does that get you? That gets you separated. That's the Yates Harris tool to pull you away from your husband for up closeness. Meanwhile, if you just jump in with both feet and try this and try that, try humor, try whatever it is, get him his own sneakers and put him on the bike and then, you know, read, tell him he has to read the Pledge of Allegiance, whatever it is, you know, so you go ahead and make sure that he, you know, okay, fine. So this is the trial and error. Excellent. You guys are awesome. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Dear Leia, how can I get my husband to revolve his schedule a little more around the family schedule? Mm. Who's got this? Don't raise your hands. I don't want to lush and harm about your husbands. But yes, we, this is a common question, a common thing that we get. So the husband is busy doing his stuff. And how does the wife like make it an, the radar of, wait, this is family time. That's family time. This is what we should be doing. Um, okay, great. Yeah, she's going to go grab something. She's grabbing some treats for us. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see. So how can we get our husbands more cognizant of this? So I find this especially in newly married, newly married, and maybe it's true with the older marrieds? The, yeah. No, longer marrieds, not older, just longer marrieds. Um, so, so with the longer marrieds, how, what we find is that um, uh, we... I mean, with the newly marrieds, what we find is they want it all. They want their husband to be home 24-7. They want him to work harder so that he brings more money. They want, you know, they want him to learn more, to go into shul and to learn more, and they want him to spend more time at home with them, you know? And they're just basically throwing all these stuff on him. And the key is to do the introspection necessary to figure out what you really, really need. What's most important to you? If, if you're, and if you're torn on something, I, I have a woman who is very, very important to her for her husband to learn, and her husband learns every night. And then she said, you know, we don't have date night. Now, you know, the kids are grown, and so after, after lunch on Shabbos, he goes and learns, and here he goes, I feel like I have no time with my husband. But I can't, what am I going to say? He's got, he's got a Seder every, you know, for, can I know he's a working guy, but he's w learning like he's in full-time colo, you know? What do I do? So I said, I, I think he, he should miss one of his, maybe miss one of his classes. And she looked at me like, ha, ha, you know, whatever. And I said, you know what? Ask a Shiloh. And she said, would you do me a favor and ask the Shiloh? So I went to Rabbi Bess and I said, you know, this woman, he's learning all the time and she's feeling lonely. She's feeling like, you know, where's my husband? And what, you know, hello. And she feeds him and she whatever. But she, said, she says every day, at, you know, he eats his meal and then she goes and and uh, and then he just walks out the door and then she's she's been alone all day and she's with him for dinner and then he goes off to learn and he said it's it's true he needs to his wife's needs and his wife's happiness is crucial should he give up everything of course not and that wouldn't make him happy wouldn't make her happy but that was an issue so we as you know we're making demands on our husbands which we have every right to do but we have to figure out for ourselves what is most important so if a woman is saying, you know, oh, I want to, I want this outfit, and I want that jewelry, and I'd like this vacation, you know, go work, stay home more, be with me more, put more attention on me. I mean, choose, choose. Now there might be some fortunate people whose income doesn't, de you know, isn't determined by how much their husband works, but I, that's not. That's very. That's 0.01 percent. The rest yeah. of us, his time that he puts into work correlates to income. So if you are even if you um, 
aren't super bratty about it. You know, you like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm good enough with this one. I don't need that fancy car. I don't need the fancy this and that and the other. I'm fine with this. You know, but there's still, if you're giving him subtle messages, oh, did you hear the Smiths went over to, went to uh, Palm Springs this year? And the, you know, Joneses went to Guatemala and the, da, 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 you know, and you're dropping these little subtle hints, he's going to be at work more. So you have to be very, very careful. Now, you might do that to get him to work more, and that's fine, but then you can't complain that he's you know, uh, that he's uh, um, spending more time at work. Now, it could be the guy wants to drive a fancy car, and the guy wants, you know, he wants to keep up with the Joneses, and he wants to be seen in his crowd as being well-to-do or something like that. Okay, that's a different issue. But for the cases, and I've seen a lot of this, the cases where the woman wants, she wants and wants and wants, and she's, she's giving him mixed messages. She wants more, but she wants his time. She can choose. She has to choose. So that's first of all. The other thing is that there is something to being satisfied with what you have. So it's kind of like even if you don't have everything you really feel you deserve, you know, nobody, who's happy with their kitchen? Nobody, you know, this, and it should, the, the counter should be there, and I want this new oven, and whatever it is, or, uh, you know, if you're a clothes person or you're a shoe person, whatever it is, we, our whole mentality, and we have source for this in the Torah, that whatever we have and whatever we are getting, we want exactly double. Okay, that when we, even if you, you, you make, you know, $10,000, you want 20. If you make 20, you want 40. That's that just the way human nature is. So given that that's human nature, how can we use that to our benefit? It, maybe it motivates us. Maybe it makes us move forward. But it, wherever it's going to tear us apart and make us separate and not feel close and bonded to our husband, that's where it becomes a problem. So the take-home message from that is to be satisfied with what we have, even though by our very makeup, we want double. Just say, you know what? This is good enough. This is good enough. You know, yeah, you know, my, my, my oven, you know, it has this cranky thing. I have to light it with a match. It's so annoying because the clicker doesn't work and the, you know, whatever. And I've had them fix the who's a magoo so many times. And whatever it is, okay, it's good enough. It's good enough. And having that kind of it's good enough attitude and satisfied with what you have means that your husband is going to be less, he's going to be more focused on the family because he's not chasing after the, bu the big buck because he feels like he wants to make your life better. Now, last point here is that planning, you know, because her question was, how do I get my husband to resolve his schedule, revolve his schedule a little more around the family schedule? So that's planning. So some people are really good at this. You know, I was on the phone with somebody, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, such and such a, a, a date would that be, or that date, or that date. And she said, oh, on the 23rd at this time would work, or on the 27th at that time would work. And I'm like, how does she, like, you know, she's got it down to the 15-minute in increments, you know? So there's some people like that, and that's great. And if you're like that, do that with your husband. If you're not like that, and you're like, oh, what did, oh my gosh, I didn't realize Rosh Hashanah is tomorrow. You know, if you're that kind of, a, you know, if you're that kind of a person, you know, so you have to know that about yourself. But planning is going to be the way to sort of logistically say, if your husband is consistently working every Sunday, and it's just driving you crazy, and you feel bad, and you feel like, well, you know, the kids are home then, that, you know, okay, he's, a, he's home on Shabbos maybe, but on Sunday he bolts, you know, and you want uh, Sundays, so sit down and say, listen, can we plan one Sunday a month to go to the park together or to have a family activity or to go do miniature golfing or to, you know, garden in the backyard as a family, whatever kinds of things. They've been so fun. <laughs> oh, really fun. Um, so, you know, whatever it is that you want, plan it out. So a lot can be solved by planning. Okay. Anyone else have comments about I this? I think, though, I feel like as, as, as Jews, the Friday... Saturday, you know, Shabbos is such mm -hmm. a good time to plan around the family. I Meaning, it could be the entire 24 hours could be family based. And even if he goes out to learn for an hour or two or two hours, there's good window of time. They're sitting down together for you know three solid meals, meals, meals and two or three meals at least two. Yeah, at least you know two. what I'm saying. So she could yeah. really take that time. And if I think she makes that time so enjoyable for him, he may be more inclined to, I don't know. Stick I find, around. I find most people, the times that they are together with their families is a little bit stressful. So I know for a lot of, a lot of my friends, the men are happy to be out. 
it's like, ugh, I'd rather be out and not be dealing I mean, with all that. And then the kids are yeah. all yelling. Yeah, and everyone's mm-hmm. yelling and they need to do things and they just, you know what? Sometimes, like, in my husband went to a men's class on, on marriage and the guy was saying, why is it every single time it's time to put the kids to bed or do something with the kids or whatever? Oh, I, I got to go pray. Oh, I got to go learn. I, I got to go. Like, they're, they're always running because they don't, it's not a comfortable environment for them. So if you make it comfortable... How and do if you, you make them you do that? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it fun. Don't, make, don't give them too much responsibility. Don't give them too much responsibility. Yeah, when they're home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like make what? it enjoyable. Don't give them any. Like she's like too much. Don't give them any. Don't give them any responsibility. <laughs> wow. I mean, just let them hang. Let them hang. Kids. Let them ball with the kids. But they'll, they'll like it. They'll, I mean, they see that. That you know. That's the best thing is family at the end of the day. <laughs> family in the day? At the end of the day. At the end of the day. That's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and if they're enjoying really that. Yeah, they'll, you know. Let them savor it. Mm-hmm. So, but if you're sitting there, give this one a bath, do homework without right. one, do this. Don't exactly. make it trust them. Don't pressure them. You know, we have to do this. Right. Let them just, let them right. run the show. Let them save. Right. Like, oh, let's go play basketball. Let's go yeah. swimming. Let's yeah. go out. Like, let them be the yeah. ones in charge. And like, give me your parents and say, hey, yeah. what do you, you know, what do you want to do? The kids are all home. We're home. What do you think yeah. we should do today? Let, give it, them a choice so they'll feel like they, you know, like, hey, this is yeah. my, you know, they'll do this what they want to do and they'll automatically like it. They pick it. Yeah, but a lot of friends also that complain all the time. Oh my gosh, my husband comes home and hey, when he comes, he wants to play, he gets the kids rowdy and I'm trying to get them to bed and they need to be in bed and if they're not in bed and they're so mm-hmm. scheduled. <coughs> I'm not looking at anyone in particular. Look at this guy. And they're so scheduled. Right, and they're so scheduled, oh, right. and, they're so the scheduled. and then they get Love upset. The yeah, and then they get upset they get afterwards upset. that why yeah. my husband doesn't want to spend time with my kids. And I'm like, because the times that he is trying to, you're really hampering him. And you you know what? I promise, yes, it may, he may disrupt things, but it will eventually play itself out. If you're going to stick to your... They have to be, and they have to be in bed. Da, da, da. He's gonna, he's gonna end up saying it's not. That's what I want. This when is fantastic. I, want. I hope she's listening to the lady who wrote this question. <laughs> yeah. in, yeah. it's you gorgeous. have people, you have young couples starting out that can't afford help, mm-hmm. and they're looking for that their husband to walk through those doors to relieve them. I know. You I know, know, they're exhausted. Mm-hmm. They're changing diapers all day, or they're bathing and feeding. And they were working they're all day. Like no, but what if they were working too? Well, what the if wife they also were working wor- works, and, yeah. you know, they ran to the babysitter, dropped off the kid, ran to work, picked did up the Did three carpools, did, did, yeah. You know, and a lot of these people aren't fortunate enough to, right. that are maybe right. listening to have extra yeah. help. Yeah. Right. So they really do need their husbands. And then they're going to be resentful when they're going to, you know, right. he's going to walk through the door. I'm like, oh. I said too much responsibility. You said none. <laughs> 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 she said none. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a, that's an issue, and the issue is that the um, it's got it's all a balance. But the the key here is to understand what the end result you're looking for. If you're looking for closeness in the marriage, you're looking for the husband to spend more time with the family. You know, these are some tools that if you say, "Oh, oh, good, here you you you, get, you come home here," <laughs> you know, whenever you hand the baby to him, you know, you have to think, okay, so the next night he comes home two hours late. You know, I, I, it's really. Yeah, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, she's so scared. I'll she was sitting there thinking that time. Yeah, 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 I said, but now she knows. This is not number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So she's yeah. she's got it down pat. But yeah, yeah. listen, husbands mm-hmm. in general, men in general, they they do feel like they're working really hard, and when they come home, they want to, you know, to to take it a little easy and yeah. make sense. So That's good. Okay, it's very good. So the basic thing is, it's a very delicate balance, and you want to make it great for you, and great for him. And again, we want to say emphasize the fact planning ahead and forethought and thinking what's really most important to me, that's going to be the only way to chart this course. If you're just going to react, oh, he didn't do this and he did that and whatever, you know, and you're not even in your head prioritizing what it, it, what's most important to you, it's not going to go well. Whereas if you're very, very thoughtful about, you know what, it's less important to me about the schedule, it's less important to me that he learns five nights a week. Okay, if he goes to two, three nights, it's fine. The other two nights, he's home and just hanging with the kids without structure. 
you need to work on it. You need to think about it. You need to plan ahead. And with a lot of forethought, you can really make it extraordinary. And because you're being so careful and so thoughtful and so concerned and with, you know, davening to Hashem, praying to God that, that it should go well, he will help you. This is an area we've all dealt with, and we've all had those times where at night, you know, it's frazzled or whatever, and then it's just delicious. Like we put our head down in the pillow and it's like, that was just a delicious night. Okay, this one got a little upset with that, and the dishwasher didn't, you spilled all over the floor or whatever, but everybody helped clean it up, and that was really a delicious, delicious thing. We can savor those precious times that aren't, you know, that seem to just fall into place. And you have much higher percentages of those if you've done a lot of forethought on what your true needs are and let go of everything else. Okay? Very good. Okay. We have time for uh, another question? One yeah. One more, yeah. Okay. Um, Last one. Okay, let me just say, uh, yikes, I have so many. Oh, my gosh. We're, okay. Take a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I have so many. Um, a lot came in this week. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'll let you guys choose. Do you want a, one about a husband speaking sarcastically, or do you want one about a hu husband working on a husband's anger? Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Okay, fine. Sarcasm was... Okay, sarcasm was the vote. Okay, hold on. Oh, my gosh. The, how can I let these ones all... We can't cover these. Okay, all right, whatever. Well, another time. Uh, okay, so let's do the sarcasm one. Okay. Dear Leah, my husband's sense of humor is to tease me. Sarcastic jokes that are negative, but they hurt. I always explain that it bothers me, but he thinks I'm too sensitive. How can I ask and explain in a way that he understands how hurtful he is being? So sarcasm is, you know, oh, yeah, you know, you th what's a good sarcastic comment? Um, uh, oh, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I did a great job on the thing. Oh, you think you did a great job or something. So, is that good? Wait, we don't know. We're not sarcastic people. We're not sarcastic people. <laughs> <laughs> make a really good meal, and the husband will say, oh, you're killing me or something, you know, like the food that's is not, so good. That's sarcasm. No. That's, that's or, like a compliment. No, but an insult. 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 So good. Or, I, I wouldn't think that's you, you mean you would take yeah. that as a compliment? Yeah. You're killing me because the food was so good I yeah. ate everything. Hello, I, I, I think, know, I don't like I think that. yeah, no, I a bad cook or something like that, like being sarcastic about no. something like that, maybe. Like, um, yeah, she didn't say what. No, like, sarcastic. Oh, the diet. What did That's why I say the yeah. donuts. The, the donuts, donuts, girl, was be for a thing. Like, right, right, oh my right. god, I did. I'm doing so well done. He's like, yeah, you do so much better if you didn't have those donuts. Right, right. right. That's yeah. like, uh, yeah. That's me. Right, right. Like, she said, she she said, that she was a true exercise story exercise from last show. He's like, you're talking with your friends, you're not walking, you know? Exactly. Like, that's not, you know, like, oh, yeah, say, say that again, walking. what? Like, say yeah, someone goes walking. walking for exercise every day with their friends, and so she says, like, I, I go walking every day, walking, and you're talking, and you happen to be walking while you're talking, you know? Something no, like more that. like she goes at him walking with her friends, and she says to her friends, we go exercising all the time, and he goes, is that what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like yeah, we may so find fantastic. like sometimes, you know, our exercise is that we take the farthest spot in the mall, not the closest spot. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that yeah, what you call I it? Is that what you call yeah. exercise? Yeah. Wonderful. What did yeah. you say? That would be the yeah. okay. okay, all right. So, okay, so she's sensitive to those things. Yeah, so the first question, so this is the answer that I did, I an answered her on. I mean, she might be here listening or whatever, but I answered her on email because I didn't want her to wait. It seemed like a, she seems like she was in pain. The first question is, do you generally feel heard in the relationship, or is this just another example of his insensitivity to your feelings? Meaning, is his sarcasm all across the board in the whole relationship, and he's just insensitive, and n you're never getting your relationship needs met? Or is, in general, you know, he's like, oh, can I get this for you? Do you need that? You know, how are you doing? What's going on? And in general, he's pretty, you know, on, on it, you know, he's, he, he seems like he's with you and he's attentive and he's trying to take care of you as best he can. And then he's just got this streak of sarcasm. Maybe he was a class clown in high school mm -hmm. and he got a lot of kudos for being so sarcastic in front of the teacher and everybody laughed and whatever. And so he learned that habit and he doesn't realize how painful it is. But in general, he's a good husband, you know, uh, who, who gives you the attention you need. So that's something to consider. If it's just a sarcastic habit, it, that's easier to fix. If it's that's how he is in general and he's really not there, it might take therapy. It might take, you know, hey, listen, you know, you're never, you're not there for me and you need, you know, and, and then you say these mean comments every once in a while and it really digs. It really, it really feels bad. Um, 
the main thing is unwanted teasing is never okay. Like, you know, our, our family's big on teasing, like, but in a, the sweetest, sweetest way, like we'll say the sweet things and, you know, like one of the things, like, you know, like I, I happen to be very overly emotional. So like if, you know, something happens, something goes, oh, 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 you know, whatever. My husband tells a story on Shabbos. It's like, you know, like, and, and then at the end, you know, he hadn't seen her for 40 years and they went and he saw his mother for the first, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll be tears streaming out of me. Okay, so I get teased about a lot in my family, but it's so sweet. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody else, then one of the, my daughters or one of the, you know, if somebody else is being like that, they'll say, oh, you're just like mom, you know? Mm -hmm. It's sweet. They're like, they're teasing me, but it's a yummy. Mm -hmm. right, teasing out of love and teasing out of, you know. Well, right. no, there's also like, you know, sometimes my family makes fun when I sing at the table, but... I'm not sensitive about that because, like, Cause you know, you know I do. totally get that. <laughs> 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 These are things that he's teasing her about that are probably sensitive things. They're not things like, you know, oh, you cry easily, you know, you're emotional about a nice story. It's something that's getting to her. That's yeah. different. You yeah. know, it, everything strikes a chord with someone differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends how true it is. Like, yeah. how, you know, if it's like a real... No, and it's something you feel badly about. <laughs> Very yeah. true about the singing. <laughs> but, but, you know, right. you know, I'm also so, like, I'm a good boy, but like, you know, I can dance, so like, you know. Right, you exactly. Know, you don't have, yeah. it's not breaking your confidence, exactly. so you're fine about it, but it depends, it depends, depends what they're, are. Oh, that's true. yeah, it's like, you know, you're entitled what to you feel sensitive about it. And if, so, if he's intentionally doing it right, on you're that. Entitled. Yeah. What do you say if you know? it's the intent and where it's coming from, also. Like, if he means to, like, if some, like, sometimes people tease like but that's like you know it's like fun and like you were it's saying fun. <clears throat> right but when but sometimes people tease and they're like really mean to like like trying to get a little dig yeah. so that's where she probably no, but also between a husband and wife sarcasm is 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 very hard it's not something but anyone wants but but even teasing with a husband and wife it, when they're alone together they could tease from here till tomorrow when it's other people are involved every tease has to the other, hearing. yeah, because everyone else they who's hearing know. it they don't, don't know. know. So whatever sure. they're saying has a little bit. The person around is a little bit sort of like, what? you know, like what? Huh? And and it's for the wife it could be an okay tease, but it's not. Yeah, everything is a little bit uncomfortable. Sure. I think with a husband and wife, it's much more sensitive. You're overly sensitive to how he's treating you in public and yeah, how, how it looks to, how it looks to everyone else. The kids yeah, are getting. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. he's teasing her one on one, it may not be as. It, it, it's harder. It's harder. I think mm -hmm. also Fair. it's it's like what you said before. Sometimes you, the the, the men could say something because that's their personality to be sarcastic, mm -hmm. but they're clueless that their words are really mm -hmm. just not always appropriate and have an effect on other people. Mm -hmm. If that's their nature and they're not, the intention is not really. There's no intention. Right. It's just that's how it comes out of the person's mouth that they're always just no filter you know no filter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're just sarcastic not realizing and then but it's up to you to say something you know right, I, then you have to I, that. I I buy takeout for dinner because I had a busy day and and the comment is oh where the dinner was delicious where do you find the time you know I hear that like, you yeah, know like you. that's a you know like that's so, oh, you didn't make dinner, you, you know, you, you just right. bought takeout, where do you find the time? It's, the kids hear it, right. That's and then the kids learn sarcasm, and it's not, it's yeah. not a healthy thing, to yeah. just to have it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So the question is, how does, how does she get her husband to stop? said if that doesn't work and there's more to it then she'll have to see but the first thing is with all those things with the no filter and those type of things or or being more sensitive in front of someone else or knowing yourself with certain things that you're saying, you really have to communicate that you know you marry this other person who has such different sensitivities than you do because everyone's so different and everyone grew up in a different environment and is confident about certain things and self you know whatever about other things, so you really have to communicate and be vulnerable into sharing what what triggers you and what doesn't. And sharing that with someone is so powerful because, first of all, you're sharing, you know, something private your about yourself, so you're really, yeah. but also it really gives them the power to know, and, and obviously we're hopefully everyone's with a good person who's going to use that power in a very responsible way and really then be able to 
treat you the way you need. What if they brush it off and say, well, that's, 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 what, that's what he's saying to her. I think say. that's the hardest thing for her. She's well, not acknowledging it to him. She does have that communication with him, and he says, oh, you're making too big of a deal, or you're too sensitive. You know, maybe it's me. Like, you could put you. Yeah, this is my sensitivity. Maybe it's me. It's not you. This is what, like, that's for sure, if she communicates it a few times and it's not getting better, then I agree that there's something going on there that needs help. But initially, it's definitely something that we take for granted that you assume that, well, I'm sensitive about that, so everyone must know that that's not so something So he's doing nice it volitionally say, and right? meanly, yeah. yeah. But that's mm -hmm. not always the case. Sometimes I'm super fine about someone making fun of my singing, but if I would say it to someone else, they'd be like, How you know, you're shattered. <laughs> so, like, you, in your mind, you assume just because that's something that doesn't matter to you that, like, you know, like... I wouldn't care if someone told me I picked up tea. I'd be like, yeah, I'm so happy I'm supporting the restaurants in town. You know, but someone else might, you, you assume in your mind that whatever you're sensitive about, it's fair ground to be sensitive about, and whatever you're not, it's fair ground not to be. Is exactly. that not like exactly. that? Mm -hmm. and but the way you're communicating, the answer is the way you have to strategize how you're going to do it. It has to be the right time, not in an angry moment, not yelling. To tell, to communicate this time. Yeah, yeah. Yes. not in an angry moment. He, 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 Space just, it he out. doesn't get it. He, he doesn't, doesn't get it. He's clueless. Yeah. He's yeah. clueless. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so. And when he gives the comment, you know, you're just too sensitive, which is the exact. It's like, the worst I've had thing this problem about, I've had this question about sarcasm probably 20 times. Okay. And it's always that when, when she calls him out on it, the mm -hmm. husband's response is always, you're too sensitive. Right, right. And the answer to that is, you're right. Correct. <laughs> you're right. I am. I am. I, yeah, I, am, I am, I am, and I'm going to work really hard on trying to be less sensitive, but when I do afterwards come to you and I say something to you, just say, I'm sorry, honey. Because yeah, I think right. if that's what she that's got, right. I don't think she'd be, he's probably not going to change. Perfect. Potentially, but, yeah. potentially not going to change, right. I but, All right, so the take-home message from that one, the take-home message is that sarcasm really has no place. Like if you're putting up with sarcasm, it's like being a doormat with, saying, with a welcome sign on it. Don't put up with sarcasm. But how you get around it and how you communicate that to your husband in a way that he can really, really hear it takes a lot of forethought, a lot of planning, a lot of steak dinner, make him a dinner, sit him down and say, listen, you know, I want to talk to you about something. I don't, you know, again, you have to prioritize and pick your battles and whatever, but I really want to discuss something to you. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I'm going to just say it and get it out there. I'm not trying to make you bad or wrong or point the finger and make you feel like a horrible husband. I'm very happy with my life, if you are. Okay, I'm very happy with my life. 99% of everything, wonderful, wonderful. One note. Sarcasm is hurting my feelings, and most men don't realize this. So I'm not saying you're bad and bleh. Most men don't get, they think sarcasm, and maybe you are the class clown. You're very popular, so it, it, it's quite you know, plausible that when you're using the sarcasm with all your friends, it's making you more friends. So you think, oh, that's going to work here. But here, it makes me feel you know, badly, and I, I, know you don't, I know you're not doing it on purpose but I want to be closer to you. And so if there's a way we can kind of, maybe it'll take us a year, maybe it'll take us two, us two years, you know, we'll say, take on part, you know, maybe it'll take us two years to get over this, but like when you say something sarcastic, how about, you know, do you want me to say something right then? Probably not if it's in front of the kids. So maybe later I'll say, oh, by the way, that comment you made about, you know, the reason I'm fat is because of the donuts or, you know, whatever, that, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying for the story. The story. Do you wait for the story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you want to uh, see that story, um, it's two weeks ago. Yeah, two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. It's yeah, two okay. weeks ago. So the story with the donuts. The fat woman with the donuts. <laughs> right. So. So. Um, anyway, but the point is that you know, figuring out a plan of how you're going to talk to about your husband is, that's the fix. That's the fix. Is starting with you, is it fair that it starts with you? No. Okay, I get it. We're not looking for fairness here. We're looking for closeness. We're looking for joy and happiness and shalom bias to 120 and having glee in our marriages. That's what we're going for. So whether it's your fault, his fault, whatever, it makes no difference. You can do something about it. You have the power to do something about it. And if there's one thing, if we had to stand on one foot and learn what is our masura, what is the one thing that is most crucial in everything we do in our marriage, it's from the beginning, from, from that, God, that, that uh, um, 
our husband is the giver and that we're the receiver, all blessing comes from God through to our husbands and then to us, okay? So our job to be the happiest people and to bring the most blessing and the most joy into our life, our job is to be the best receiver possible. And that means stepping up to the plate for an issue like this when he's using sarcasm and you've told him a million times and you've nagged at him and you've cried and you've whatever you've done, you didn't succeed in getting him to stop to do it. So take, take, go, you know, do more trial and error. Take the bull by the horns. Try other things. Preemptive strike. Hey, you know, talk to him and say, give, do a point system. Every time you don't say something sarcastic, at the end of the day, I'm going to say, oh, you said nothing sarcastic. Here's five dollars. Here's one dollar. Here's a peach. Here's a, here's one favor. You know, whatever it is, you work on your creativity to create the environment that's going to bring out the best in you. That's what we're here for. Thank you. This is the Ladies Talk Show. Leah Richheimer, thank you everybody very much for being here.